Hey guys, and welcome to the what is this the ninth review for one these are I believe it's the ninth. Uh here I'm gonna be reviewing the sequel to Name on Elm Street, which is obviously a Name on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. In this one a new family's moved into the house. Uh where Nancy used to live. Uh, the son there's a son called Jesse, he's the main character, who's two parents and his sister. And then Jesse and his girlfriend find um, Nancy's diary. It wasn't in the first one, but it's conveniently in our cupboard in this one. And he reads it and he finds out what's going on. Because by this point he's been haunted by Freddy as well and chased after in his dreams. Well, I say chased after. I can't really say I like this one very much. In fact, I think it might be the weakest of the Elm Street movies. Uh, it's got some good points. I'll get the Elm Street out of the way first. First off, um, Mark Patton, um, who plays Jesse, the main character, he did a really good job. I think he was a good actor. But he sadly never appeared in very much after this. I wish he did. He was, uh, he was pretty good in it. I, I don't know why, though. He, I'd like to have seen him in more stuff. And there's a good scene. I mean, I'll get to this, the point of this in a minute, but there's a scene where Freddy and bursts out of Jesse. Like, literally bursts out his body, clawing his way out and everything. No CGI, just a fake dummy that looks really convincing. It's done really nicely. But, to be honest, I think they're really the only memorable scenes in, from that film. When he, The thing is, Freddy doesn't really do much in this one, so to speak. I, th I think that's really disappointing to see. He's there, but he's more or less um, making Jesse do the stuff. See, I think he's lost his powers or something like that after the first one. But I'm not really too sure. But he invades Jesse's dreams uh, on the subject of dream sequences. I don't think there's enough of them in this film, to be honest. The beginning's good. It's got a scene where Jesse and two, a couple of other girls are on a bus. Um, it's perched on a high rock. Uh, no, no, okay, what do you call it? I took geography, I should know this. A slab, I think it's called. Aye, uh, and it's collapsing. And Freddy's on the bus as well, which I get them. I think it's a pretty good scene. But there's not, no other good dream sequences in there. That's why I needed a few more scenes like that. Uh, but yeah, Freddy possesses Jesse. He makes him kill his coach. And what's... I don't know really how to describe it. It's a weird death scene. Uh... Freddy makes all the things in the room come alive, like he's a um, PE teacher, and he gets dragged into the showers where Jesse is um, by skipping ropes, and he's hoisted into the air, and he gets smacked to death with the skipping ropes, naked. Uh, I didn't expect to see it the first time around, and I didn't expect the male to do either. But that's another thing. Uh, there's a... I really I didn't even notice this the first time, but people have analysed the supposed gayness in this film. There's a scene where Jesse walks in a bar which many have said is a gay bar, but again I didn't even notice. It doesn't even it doesn't look like a gay bar. But um before the coach gets killed uh, he runs into the coach in the the bar. And this is late night and the coach demands he returns to school to do laps around the gym hall. That's pretty weird. Say it was Saturday and your maths teacher came up to you and he pulled out a bunch of fractions in the calculator and told you to do them. Wouldn't you be like, uh, no. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Horror movies rarely follow logic. But that death scene was alright, I suppose, but the rest aren't too good. I mean, even that one's not not great. Sure, the first one only had four scenes in it, but the lack of death scenes was made up by the quality of the two best ones. Those being Tina... Uh, getting brutalised on the ceiling by Freddy getting slashed up and Johnny Depp well getting sucked under his bed and splattering all over the damn ceiling again uh, and this one he kills the coach he kills Jesse's friend Grady uh, and he, you see like Freddy's gloves go through the door like after impaling Grady we don't really see too much uh you see, this is a good scene again, um, he comes out of the dream world, or at least I think he is, he sort of appears out of nowhere, which would imply it's the dream world, but who knows. Uh, and he crashes a party, kills a few kids, not not um, too gory, it's entertain, entertaining though. Uh, <laughs> one guy actually approaches Freddy and tells him to I think, calm down or something, 
Yeah, as if that's going to work. It doesn't end too well for him either. And then he leaves, and Jesse's girlfriend, I can't remember her name, but she chases after Freddy, and she goes to the abandoned boiler room where he used to work, like the power plant place. I don't know how she knows Freddy's there, but she knows. Uh, she runs into him and defeats it. It's, I don't know really how to, again, describe this. It's the power of love. She kisses him. Like, the whole thing is with this film is that Jesse is Freddy possessed, so she kisses him and he reverts back into Jesse in uh, pretty brutal fashion. But then at the very end, they're both on uh, the school bus from the beginning. Like, you assume everything's over in the school bus, driven, I might add, by Robert England, the guy that played Freddy Krueger, uh, who I've actually met in real life. Yep, I've... This hand has shook the hand of Freddy Krueger. We'll get to that story another time, though. I've met quite a few horror stars, but not to get off topic or anything. Uh, but then, Freddy appears again. You see the bus driving off into the desert place where um, the beginning of the film took place again with the whole bus stuck on the slab. And it pretty much ends there. My thoughts, like... My thoughts. It's got some good scenes, like I've said. The whole um, bursting out of Jesse. Uh, the first dream sequence. The party scene. But the rest just boring. Like, I really couldn't have cared less. I mean, apart from Mark, who was a good actor, the rest of them just... And, and Robert, obviously, but the rest of the cast just bored me. Again, not, not bad by horror standards. I just... It didn't feel like it went anywhere. Freddy was just there, so to speak. It didn't really have a purpose in this one. They could have ruled this film with somebody else as the character of Freddy. Called it something else other than Nightmare on Elm Street 2 and nobody would have suspected the thing. Not the worst horror film of all time, but a really disappointing follow-up, I have to say, to the original. My honest rating... Uh, if I was being really strict, I'd probably give it a 3, but I think I'll give it a 4. Uh... I don't really do this that often, but I think I'll go. I'll split right down and go three point five, which means it's far below average. Sort of border borders quite on the bad side of things, but it's, yeah, three point five for Nightmare on Elm Street Two: Freddy's Revenge, the weakest of the series. But to be honest, I'm pretty glad they got that out of the way first because from here on out, I don't really think there's one I hate. Or real, not really enjoy. And from here onwards, especially with the next one, they just got better. Bye for now.